welcome back to my channel. My name is Cole Anderson and today I'm going to be continuing my Mozart streak from last week with a really interesting and unusual piece. It's a transcription by Franz Liszt of the famous Confutatis and Lacrimosa movements from Mozart's Requiem. I was actually of two minds about even making this video in the first place because as I was practicing this transcription I wasn't really certain that I could do justice to the Confutatis movement on the piano. Eventually I came to the conclusion that it actually was possible to make a good recording of it, but that I would need to kind of let go of some preconceived notions that I had about the piece uh, from having listened to certain versions for orchestra so many times. I'm convinced that Liszt's arrangements in general oftentimes show us his own peculiar ideas about how a piece should be interpreted, in particular his ideas about tempo. And it might surprise many people who have learned to think of Liszt's music as a kind of tightrope act, for the most part, of daring speed and virtuosity, but Liszt, at least towards the latter part of his life, when he retired from the concert stage and dedicated himself to composing and conducting and only occasionally playing the piano, was actually well known for taking surprisingly broad and grand tempi. And in this characteristic he was actually quite similar to his near contemporary, uh, Richard Wagner, who enshrined his own ideas about this in his pamphlet on conducting, which is quite a fascinating read, uh, despite some of Wagner's personal unpleasantness coming out in a few jibes he takes at people like Mendelssohn. At any rate, in that pamphlet Wagner speaks out about what he feels is a su superficial tendency towards excessive speed in performances, particularly in the works of Beethoven and others. And whether or not that's accurate or not, it's interesting to realize that this was a trend that was taking place. So the way in which Liszt writes the opening of this arrangement with the full octaves in the left hand, marked pedal and fortissimo, uh, suggests to me that he felt the tempo of the Confutatis much slower than at least what I was accustomed to hearing before, and indeed I think probably slower than Mozart intended it to be. In last week's video on the Rondo in A minor by Mozart, I touched on how an andante would have been a much more flowing tempo for Mozart, and that later in the 19th century it had developed into a slower tempo, just slightly faster than adagio. And at first I tried to play more at the tempo that I was used to, but I couldn't quite get the right kind of power that I think is really necessary. Uh, maybe other pianists could, I haven't actually heard any other renditions that are close to that kind of tempo. but. Uh, after practicing enough, I began to become much more convinced by the slightly slower tempo, and I even found some versions for orchestra that were at that tempo. For example, the recording by Carl Bohm, for one, and several others as well from earlier on, from the 50s and 40s. So I do ask your indulgence if you are used to a faster tempo. Don't judge this version prematurely based on the tempi. We are after all hearing Liszt's own unique feelings about this music and about how it should be interpreted, and I think it's actually quite hypnotic once you get used to it. The Lacrimosa was very interesting to me from another perspective. Uh, this music is some of my favorite music of all time, it's absolutely unforgettable. And there's actually a number of versions for the piano. Um, there are some fairly workmanlike versions for four hands, including one by Liszt's teacher, Carl Czerny, and there's a version of the entire Requiem for two hands by Liszt's student, Carl Klindvort and several others as well. But the only other version that even comes close, artistically speaking, to challenging Liszt's version is probably the one by his old pianistic rival Sigismund Talberg. And Talberg, of course, was Liszt's great rival and opponent during the 1840s, when they were both at the height of their fame as virtuosi. But Talberg was a really serious musician as well. No less an artist than Clara Schumann lauded the way in which Talberg played Beethoven, for instance. And his arrangement of the Lacrimosa is actually very beautiful, and actually a little bit closer to the original as far as the literal notes go. I've put a link to a performance of it in the description box if you're interested in hearing that version as well. For me, despite its beauty and its being a little closer to the original in terms of notes, I think that there's something a little bit salon-like or precious about it, 
And I think that the freedom that Liszt takes with the score actually allows him to more accurately portray the full range of emotions and sounds that are present in the original. It just has a much wider range of textures and a greater sense of solemnity and seriousness, in my opinion. But to each their own, of course, uh, feel free to comment if you disagree with my opinion here. Beyond that, I did put the approved poetic translation of the original Latin text from the Requiem Mass into the score. Uh, originally, I wanted to do a more literal translation so you could really see which words uh, had what kind of meaning, but my understanding of Latin grammar is a, unfortunately too limited to be able to do this. So if there are any Latin experts out there who would like to chime in in the comments and provide a more literal translation and perhaps outline some of the grammatical structures, I would be very thankful because that's something that actually does interest me quite a bit. I won't go into great detail here about the compositional history of the original Requiem. Uh, that's been treated at such length in other places. Of course, Mozart only actually finished the first eight bars of the Lacrimosa in the manuscript, but we can probably deduce that his pupil uh, Sussmeier had pretty detailed sketches to work from in completing the rest of the movement, which were then doubtlessly destroyed by Mozart's widow Constanza. She didn't want to uh, let it be known how much of the movement was actually finished by Mozart and how much of it was done by Sussmeier. My own supposition is that quite a bit of this music probably is Mozart's, uh, given how different the music of the whole Lacrimosa is from anything that's come down to us from Sussmeier. Uh, whatever the division of labor between the two, the end result is a very moving meditation on mortality, and I think Liszt does the piece full justice in this beautiful transcription. So thank you again very much for watching. Um, do please consider supporting this channel. You can do that either through my Patreon account, uh, www.patreon.com forward slash independent pianist, or I have a link to my PayPal account as well if you want to just make a single donation. You can also support the channel just by subscribing and liking and tuning in next week when I'll be back with some more great music.